Abby, tell me why, what prompted you to go for timber in the first place for Jurong Lake Gardens? Uh, you've had other b structures around for a long time, but why was timber chosen? We wanted timber as a, a natural material, uh, more natu natural than concrete or steel, uh, mainly because we really wanted to form that continuum of nature from the gardens to the building structures and to the interiors of the buildings so that visitors can really be immersed in nature. So that was the starting point of why we wanted timber. Uh, the other um, reason why we wanted timber was we really wanted to find a sustainable source of building materials. And for the longest time, we had shied away from hardwood because of the lack of uh, sustainable sources. And when mass engineered timber came along, we found a viable, sustainable solution for using timber as a sustainable material and we just went for it. And uh, we've, we've seen, uh, well I've seen some of the, the buildings being going through the construction phase and there's obviously a bit more to be done as well. So t just tell me how you see what I call the six pavilions, how, how will they be used for the public? They will generally be used as supporting garden amenities, um, housing a range of um, users like F&B, uh, washrooms, educational facilities, uh, exhibition spaces, and even private function spaces uh, for the public to hire for wedding ceremonies and whatsoever private or corporate functions. So it's really a range of users that will enliven the park and the gardens with various activities and programs. Now I understand before you came to the hiring the architects and the, the planners uh, that you did do quite a lot of public uh, surveys and, and obviously with, with local residents as well as on a wider scale. So tell me a little bit about that process, the, the public feedback. Yeah. So we organised workshops and um, exhibitions and town calls and uh, kind of like small focus groups with uh, various constitu constituencies around Jurong. And so we did that series of um, public engagement sessions to understand what the immediate stakeholders really want out of the gardens. And from the outcomes, we crafted the project brief to engage the designers to get on the job. And there were a few things that came out very strong, like memories was one of it, and that's because of the sheer nature of Chinese and Japanese gardens being around for um, more than 40 years. And, and it's a place where people created, uh, had lots of memories of, and uh, had lives and families built with the gardens through the years. Okay. And one of the, the advantages, of course, of, of timber, which I, I'm sure you recognize, is that it, it, it is very uh, aesthetically pleasing to, to the public. So the fact that you're going to have these as public buildings um, really does, I think, meet that additional uh, requirement and additional demand for natural materials. So it's good that you've incorporated that uh, in the design and the actual buildings. Yeah. So that was one of the, um, what we felt was advantages using MET in a public building like that. Uh, we know that it is a sustainable and productive technology that uh, we really hope would be more readily adopted by the built environment industry and having it showcased in a public garden uh, that is accessible to everybody will make, uh, will, will really increase the awareness of the building material and, and yeah, the whole story of, of the industry. Yeah. Now you made the point, I think, in a, in a LinkedIn post that you like the warmth of the material, the warm. And of course, in tropical Singapore, we don't need to be warmer, any warmer. <laughs> but it's at the same time, it's, you're going to have them as open, open places. So there'll be a lot of breezes and and airflow coming around, so they won't be enclosed in that sense. Yeah, there will be some um, of these spaces that will be air conditioned, but most of the buildings are left uh, naturally ventilated as much as possible, yeah, so that we can still enjoy the outdoors <laughs> while under the shade and. Next to the timber buildings, I think that's a really nice experience. Yeah. So your experience working with uh, MET, the, the timber uh, structures, do you feel this is something that Singapore could do more with? Uh, more buildings, public use buildings that could be also using timber? Yeah, we certainly hope with the first trial at Drone Lake Gardens that more people will be convinced to 
to take on MET as a building material. Um, I mean, there are obviously advantages that we know, the, the aesthetic value, the sustainability aspects, uh, but we do know there are some very practical hurdles to cross and cost is definitely one of it. And so hopefully there might there will be solutions to bring down the cost much further and that will really aid the adoption much further. Yeah. And not just for public buildings. In, there really isn't any um, technical constraints to developing MET buildings in height. I mean, we've seen it done in Australia. There's 25 stories, towers done in MET. Well, certainly BCA and, and URA to some extent, but BCA are pushing now for to move away from the, the, the too much embodied carbon in buildings and embodied carbon from concrete and steel, where wood has the advantage. It, it stores carbon, but it's not, it's not, it's not bad carbon. No. And I, I suppose if you take into account that it's, you're offsetting the, the, the carbon in a building uh, if you use more timber. So it does have a balancing effect. But that's great. Thanks very much, Abby. <laughs> Thanks, great. Ken. It's a pleasure.